assessment, we will determine what it is that you need or are missing in your life or in your wellness approach and blueprint that to a program for you. It's just for you. And uh, we are reaching out to the medical community to team up with local physicians, um, therapists, and Dr. Wilkinson is our first speaker uh, in our efforts to, to um, create an allegiance, so to speak, with the wellness community. So, without any more interruptions, I will turn this over to Dr. Wilkinson. Okay, so hi everybody. Thank you, thank you for coming. How many of you have been to a naturopathic doctor before? One, okay, about, about a little less than half, okay. Um, I met Carl maybe a month or two ago when I came back, I wanted to see what they do here. When I started learning about what they do, I said, hey, it would be great, because what you do is very consistent with what I, what I do, if I came and gave a talk to you all. So I'm gonna talk tonight just a little bit about naturopathic medicine and how we approach patients. Naturopathic medicine has a very different way of thinking about health. And oftentimes when I start working with a new patient, it takes me a while to just talk to them about, hey, how do we approach health? How do we get you involved in your health care? And so I spend a lot of time with that. So it would be nice just to expose you all to the basic thoughts about naturopathic medicine so you can start thinking, hmm, maybe there's a different way to think about my health than conventional medicine. I am going to talk about a couple of different types of health conditions that are common ones out there. Not so much to give you detailed ways how to treat them naturopathically, but just to kind of compare naturopathically how we would go after these kind of conditions to, compared to conventional medicine. So I have a couple handouts, and one is kind of an outline of my talk. So I want to give these out to you, and there's a couple of, uh, there's two brochures and then my, and then outline of my talk. So when I think, when I say the word naturopathic medicine, what does that mean to you? Anybody have an idea? Just when I say the word. Non Natural, what's that? Non-traditional, okay. A lot of people, when you say naturopathic medicine, they think about, oh yeah, you do diet, you do um, IV nutrients, you do botanical medicine, you do homeopathy. Um, that's true, those are the tools that I use, but sometimes I will use drugs, but they're much farther down on my list. Um, also add in, um, I practice with a rheumatologist, so rheumatologists work with autoimmune diseases. The rheumatologist that I work with, he will prescribe fish oil or curcumin, turmeric, and a, a botanical anti-inflammatory often, but just because he uses those botanicals or fish oil type supplements doesn't make him a naturopathic doctor, okay? So it's not so much the tools that I use as a naturopath that makes me different. To me, it's the way I think, okay? Um, uh, the first item there, the tools, I just listed down a lot of the different things that I do as a naturopathic physician, just to give you an idea of what some of those things are, okay? But you'll see their medication, it's farther down on the list, okay? We're a small group tonight, so I just add in, if you have any questions, just raise your hand, we'll just talk about it, okay? So the next thing I have there is the naturopathic paradigm. That's what I'm talking about, the way I think as a naturopathic physician. And I will put kind of conventional medicine on one end of the spectrum of way of thinking, and naturopathic medicine over on the other end, but understanding all naturopaths and all conventional doctors somewhere on the spectrum, but there, there still is a general way a naturopathic physician thinks and a conventional medicine physician thinks. So from a conventional paradigm, when the body is sick or the person is sick, it is as if the body is broken. And they will often come in externally, primarily through drugs or surgery, and they're often very symptom focused, okay? This idea that the body is broken and they need something from outside the body to make the body get better, so to speak, okay? Naturopathically, when I see the body is sick, I think, hmm, those symptoms or those signs of sickness to me are signs of the body trying to heal itself, but something is getting in the way. The body is not able to heal itself. So my job as a naturopathic physician is not how can I suppress those symptoms. My job is to figure out what is getting in the way that's not allowing the body to heal. How can I help the body or the patient kind of pull those things out of the way and then let the body do the healing, okay? So this idea that the body has an ability to heal, that's a very naturopathic way of thinking. So let me kind of illustrate this concept. 
So I often get patients come to me that say, hey, I'm on drug XYZ, what naturopathic thing or what botanical supplement or whatever can I take instead of this drug? That's not a very naturopathic way of thinking. That is just taking some natural thing, who knows if it's better or not, and replacing it with a drug. But the thinking is still the same. How can I suppress something? How can I override some physiology without trying to understand why is the body having those symptoms in the first place? Okay? So that idea makes sense. Okay? So given that idea, that means as a naturopath, we're really trying to investigate. We're really trying to work upstream to figure out what could be the, the starting causes of the, of the health condition. Okay? On the back of your page, or on the second page, if you have a copied one, I have um, this first one called the naturopathic treatment paradigm. I'll walk through that just for a second here to kind of illustrate this idea of how we think naturopathic treatment approaches health. First is, there, you, you never have to state either you're healthy or you're sick. It's really a continuum, okay? And we all can know that. We, we feel generally healthy, but some days we feel better than another. It's not that we were sick one day and healthy the next. It's just we kind of slid a little farther on that continuum towards health. And there'll be plenty of people, they will feel sick, but they don't have any labs that are out of range. They don't have any diagnos diagnostic studies out of range. You can't really categorize them with a disease, but we know they have something going on even though we don't know what it is. They've just slid down that, that continuum more towards disease, okay? <clears throat> the second kind of way of thinking is health requires certain things. <clears throat> if you have these certain things in your diet, in your lifestyle, in your emotional state, you will tend towards health. If you don't have these things, you will drift away from health. So basic things like we need clean air, clear, uh, clean water. We need a healthy, whole foods, plant-based diet. Um, we need ways to m mitigate stress. We need exercise. We need all of those things. If we start lacking in some of those things, we start sliding down this continuum towards disease. Okay? <clears throat> the third one there, poor health is the body's adaptive response to inadequate requirements for, for health. So oftentimes, these symptoms we see, it's really the body trying to adapt itself for things it doesn't have, okay? And not necessarily things that need to be suppressed. <clears throat> the, fourth, the, the, um, the fourth one, kind of related to three, an acute reaction is the body's normal healing response. And we should really, these acute reactions, say you have a cold, this um, rhinorrhea, the cough, that's the body trying to express and get things out. So we shouldn't use any kind of suppressive type things. We should do things. How can we thin the mucus so it's easy for, to expectorate? How can we allow the body to have a moderate fever so it can have its normal process of raising the body temperature to kill off bacteria or viruses, okay? <clears throat> the problems come in number five there. A chronic reaction develops when an acute reaction is suppressed and the body cannot restore itself. So over time, if we continually suppress these acute reaction with the body's trying to do to heal itself, that can develop into chronic disease. Okay. If over time we have multiple acute reactions that we suppress and don't allow the body to fully express, that can develop into chronic disease over time. And we often see that. Say a child has eczema when they're young. To me, eczema is the body trying to express, trying to get something out of its body whether it's reacting to something in its diet, whether it's reacting to something that it's exposed to on the skin. If we put commonly done in conventional medicine corticosteroid creams that suppress that, that just drives that thing that the body's trying to express deeper into the body. And as we later on in life, maybe perhaps develop things like asthma, okay? Because the body, it just drives it deeper. And now you have congestion or inflammation in the lungs developed as asthma as an adult, okay? And the last one is, healing occurs when the obstacles to cure are removed and the body can return to health on its own. And that's that basic naturopathic paradigm. The body has an ability to heal. We restore somebody's ability to health by removing those things that's preventing it from healing and allowing it to do when it's on its own. Okay? So that's that basic paradigm of how we approach things naturopathically. Let's see here. So, this is kind of like audience involvement here. I kind of left some lines there. So if I was to ask you now, what makes naturopathic medicine different or unique when compared to conventional medicine? What would you say that is? Helping your body to heal itself. Helping your body to heal itself. 
we don't treat symptoms right. Yeah, we, we really like to see those symptoms as a clue of what we need to do to allow the body to heal. Right, right. Okay. So you learn a little something different of kind of just how we approach things as a naturopathic physician? Good. Um, on, the, the second, on, the, on the second page, <clears throat> we have something that's called the naturopathic therapeutic order. And this is kind of a philosophical approach. When I'm treating somebody, I like to do the least forceful way first. Okay? Imagine then probably the most forceful way to bring somebody back to health or to take away disease, so to speak, is with surgery. Okay? The least forceful way is something like dietary changes, exercise, moderating stress. And so what this little list here is as you go down in this order, you get into more forceful treatments or, or modalities of, of how to restore health. So the first one, identify and remove the cause of disease. That could be you know, looking at poor diet, looking at stress, looking at toxicity. When I talk about toxicity, I talk about gastrointestinal health, liver function, its ability to detoxify, the regular bowel movements, adequate respiration, perspiration, urination, other routes the body uses to get things out of the body. Okay? The second, if you know, just addressing those areas doesn't work, next you go to, it's kind of related, establishing a healthy regime. So more broad in terms of you know, complete modifying diet, establishing regular exercise, regular bowel movements. If those first two things, which are pretty non-aggressive um, treatments, don't work, we go to the next where we, how can we do things that stimulate the body's own healing abilities? Things like hydrotherapy, where we use hot and cold properties of water to stimulate movement of fluid in the body. Maybe perhaps someone has a, has a fever. We really want to kind of support that fever put them in a, in a hot bath to really raise it up to support the body's ability to, to, to raise the temperature. Um, or like deep breathing, getting people, if people breathe very shallow, they will build up CO2 waste in their body. Getting people to do deep breathing exercises helps expel some of that. And it's also going to be very helpful with stress and relaxation. Okay. Um, that doesn't work, we'll go down to the next one, support weakened and damaged systems. That's where we'll do more supplementation that can maybe support liver function or support more antioxidants if they have some oxidative or inflammatory condition or anti-inflammatory botanical type stuff. So now we're getting into really trying to use, you know, whether it's botanical medicine or supplements or IVs to really push physiology or push the biochemistry in the body. But you're still trying to do at that level things that support the normal physiology of the body. Okay? Then you start going down farther, correct structural integrity. That would be like what a chiropractor would do, where you do adjustments, or something I'm going to talk about a bit later called prolotherapy. It's an injection technique to support um, integrity of ligamentous structures when you have joint pain in the body. Okay? Then working all the way down, the last two you get to is addressing pathology with stuff that's specifically trying to address the symptoms of the pathology. And the last one is drugs and surgery. So what's interesting, and naturopathically, you know, I got to go through five or six things before I get down to drugs and surgery, whereas conventional medicine, that is often, I mean, other than sometimes the token eat better exercise, you know, you always go right straight down to drugs or surgery is the option, okay? So when I work with a patient, I often, I'll talk with them, okay, this kind of stuff I'm recommending, it's very simple, non-aggressive, and let's see how this works.